The national championship game is set one week away at NRG Stadium in Houston. It's Michigan against Washington, one versus two. This marks the fourth one versus two matchup in the college football playoff era. The two seed won the previous three national titles. Michigan is a four and a half point favor. The total 55 and a half. Welcome to the Wizard of Odds. Kenny White, he knows a thing or two about gambling in Houston. He gambled on UConn to win the national championship. And now Washington, the Washington Huskies, four and a half point dogs. The total's 55 and a half. When you look at the total here, Kenny, what do you like over or under in the natty? Well, well, uh, Hakeem, I liked it over a lot more when it was 54 and a half. And that was, you know, the early line that was out there. And I always say, if you're going to have a shot at beating sports betting, you've got to get down on the earliest lines. When the lines come out, that's the time to jump and, and start betting in, into situations that you feel are good for you, uh, comparing your numbers to the betting line. Uh, and if you're if you're good, you're going to be right 80% of the time. You're going to get the best of the number. That closing line value is going to be big. So um, I, I liked Michigan at three and a half. I like the total over 54 and a half. But those numbers now are gone. They're almost no play for me on either one compared to my number. I made Michigan six in this game and 59. Okay, so you're telling me that you're going to lay the four and a half with Michigan. No, I, I, I should have laid the three and a half. I didn't. I, I think there's going to be some money for the dog in this game. So I kind of held off on that, hoping I'd see a three. Uh, I passed, so no, I'm not going to lay four and a half. I'm not going to lay a bad number in this case. I'll just go in with over 54 and a half and hope we have a high-flying football game. Okay, there you have it. And uh, you do like Michigan to win the national championship. They are the favorite on the money line as uh, they will try to win a national championship for the first time since 1997. Kenny White here on CBS Sports HQ as we look ahead to the national title game. Kenny, thank you. Once again, this is the fourth one versus two matchup in the CFP era. And the two seed has won all three previous meetings. Clemson. Clemson, Alabama. So uh, perhaps it'll be Washington here. Or Michigan says what Washington did at the end of that Sugar Bowl was laughable. And we're about to crush them. That's what they could be thinking right now. Thinking late game execution against us? Not today. Uh-uh. We don't think so. Not, not in our house. It'll be game played in Houston one week from today. All right, back here with Brian McFadden. Welcome in Barrett Salee as well. And look, this matchup is going to be interesting, right? Because Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, had said, we have never seen a quarterback like Jalen Milrow. I don't know. I'm sure they've <laughs> seen a quarterback like Michael Penix Jr., BMAC, that can, BMAC, that can nope. just throw it, yes. throw dimes, just punch it in there. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting. And if Dylan Johnson is out, it takes away their run game. But I don't know that they even care about their run game based on what we saw on Monday night. Well, playing against Michigan defensively, you better be able to run the football um, because balance is something that that will be needed against Michigan because if you're one dimensional, you're predictable. Good luck in thinking you're going to be successful for, for four quarters. But I love this matchup, guys. Barrett, you talked about we've been talking about Michael Penix and the job he's done. He did tonight. But what about what? what he's done the entire season and the same can be said for his offensive mates as well uh, one of the more elite scoring offenses in college football going against a defense that only surrendered only allowed around nine points per ball game now they gave up a little more against Alabama tonight in the Rose Bowl but in totality they've been a great defensive unit especially in the red zone limiting points so you talk about Outstanding defensive play going against a high powered offense. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. And I'll tell you this much the two best teams are playing in the national championship game. I have no issue with Michigan making it. I have no issue with Washington making it. Both teams were undefeated. Both teams took care of their business in their conference. And both teams will be playing in the national championship game a week from now in Houston. The BCS would have also had these two for what it's worth. Fact. True. Just saying. But, but now we're going to go to 12 <laughs> next season. Uh, well, we'll, that's another that's <laughs> another uh, part of the show later on. But, no, we talked about, um, you know, what what Michigan did to expose Alabama's offensive line when we broke down that game right after it wrapped up. This is a different kind of matchup because – Washington has the Joe Moore award winning offensive line and we saw just how much that can help. I mean, Michael Penix, even when there were people around him 
that that offensive line still kept a relatively clean pocket and he was able to weave and and adjust and climb the pocket and still get the job done so to me you know I think Michigan's gonna have to to come at this Washington offense in a completely different way and I, I don't know if they have seen anything like these receivers we can sit here and talk about Michael Penix Jr and my goodness that dude was dropping dimes all over the place but when you have three NFL wide receivers, when you have the best wide receiver room in all of college football, when you have a wide receiver room that might be better than some NFL receiver rooms now, looking at you, Atlanta Falcons, then you can do a lot of damage. So it's going to be a fun matchup. I think when you look at how these two teams match up, I mean, it's strength on strength all over the place. And for, you know, piggybacking on what Barrett mentioned in regards to Michigan and this wide receiver unit might be the best. I know people are going to say, what about Ohio State and Marvin Harrison Jr.? Yeah, they got an outstanding wide receiver room, too. But the difference between yeah. the room in Washington compared to the room in Columbus, the room in Washington has a first round of throwing them the football. That's a big mm -hmm. difference. Currently in Columbus, they didn't have a first rounder throwing them the football when Ohio State played against Michigan uh, weeks ago. So that is a huge difference because when you watch Michael Penix, especially tonight, in tight coverage, tight windows, he was finding ways to get the football in place for his pass catchers. And he, he's been doing that the entire season. So when you have a high-level player throwing to a high-level group of wide receivers, they're going to put points on the scoreboard. All right, Kalen DeBoer has led Washington to the college football playoff national championship in just his second season. Um, he has won 25 games. He's 25 and two. <laughs> okay, like this is, this is, he's a really, really Yo, good head coach. Overall coaching record is phenomenal as well. Right, he, won, he only has like 15 losses well, in, in, in his entire coaching career. It's as crazy. you take a look at his profile here, I mean, yeah. it, it jumps off the page in terms of what he's done um, and, and making and getting uh, Washington to the national championship in just his second season. Barrett, when we talk about coaching matchups, and look, I know sometimes we become prisoners of the moment, and we don't like how Kalen DeBoer and his coaching staff called the end of that game in the Sugar Bowl, but when you look at the two coaches and Jim Harbaugh and Kalen DeBoer, is there an edge here? Yeah, there's an edge. I mean, Jim Harbaugh has been in the college football playoff three straight years. He's been in big situations like this. And I think, uh, of, of course, you know, Jim Harbaugh is quirky, but he's smart. He understands what he's doing. He's obviously been in the, in the Super Bowl as a coach as well. But I think, yeah, you're, you're prisoner of the moment when it comes to Kalen DeBoer. I get that. And certainly there's concern there. But this is his first time. People from all walks of life, whether it's coaches or CEOs or ARCA, whatever, you're, you learn your best lessons through mistakes. And when Washington goes back and self scouts the last two minutes of that game uh, against Texas, they're going to see, hey, th things went a little wrong. Things went awry. How do we fix that? And so I, I don't think it's that big of a gap because like you saw, but Kalen DeBoer's credentials are unreal. I mean, it's almost like a video game and not when I play video games, when other people do, other people who are actually good at them. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I think when, when you look at what he's capable of doing, if he can just sort of manage those in-game decisions in big moments on a big stage, I think be fine and there's something there's like we always talk about the best tape to look at or when you fail like Nick Saban is a perfect example he loves when he wins games and he has a, a, a reason to yell at his team well Kalen DeBoer has a reason to look in the mirror and yell at that guy in the mirror and I think that can help him moving forward for the for the next week preparing for the Michigan game yeah, and I think when you talk about coaching edge guys I would give it to Harbaugh uh, he's been you know at Michigan longer been in this level of football collegiately longer than Kalen and also too you talk about Barrett coaching in the Super Bowl I mean that's the highest of the highest when you talk about the playoff mm -hmm. running into the Super Bowl and outside of that what about the personnel matchups that we're going to see because I can tell you this much the Michigan Wolverines they're going to find a way to try to run the football and that has been something they've been doing the entire season you watch the game tonight against Washington's defense Texas they had opportunities. They were running the football up and down against that defense. Of course, untimely fumbles led to a window for Washington to be able to create separation on the scoreboard, and they were able to do so. But can Washington defensive unit, the front, can they play the, the, the physical style of football to be able to limit positive runs for Michigan? And then, of course, when you transition, guys, to Washington and, and Michael Penix Jr., you know, can his offensive line, who's done a phenomenal job in protecting him all year long, can they protect him against some of the stunts, some of the blitzes they will see from Michigan? Because we, one thing about Michigan, they're going to bring heat. 
And they're not going mm -hmm. to sit back and just sit on their heels and allow you to pick them apart, similar to what we saw from the Longhorns defense tonight. All right, we're going to pick this apart uh, every which way from now until Monday. Yeah, we like to give you a little pick right now because Michigan is a four and a half point favorite. The total is 55 and a half. And I'll mention this if you think about Washington on the money line. Only two teams that started the season plus 1,000 or worse has won the playoff. The 2019 LSU Tigers, which was an absolute wagon, uh, they were plus 2,500, and the 2014 Ohio State Buckeyes at plus 4,000. Also at 4,000, Washington opened the season at 4,000, so 40 wow. to 1 to win the national championship. And you know what I say, you can't spell Washington without wagon, okay? <laughs> you can't spell wagon without Washington. You can't either both ways. It's a, they're a wagon. So right. I'm going to tell you, I'm not jumping off of the wagon right now. I'm giving you my pick right now. Washington National Champions. I don't, don't, even, I don't even need the points. You I know, like I, I can't root. Look, I, I, root, I rooted for Michigan yeah, to I, beat I, Alabama. I, 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 I you know away. I am not rooting for Michigan to win the National <laughs> Championship. Finally. There you go. Washington. Finally, your team pride is showing. Thank you. Can't spell Hakeem. wagon without Washington. I appreciate that. I mean, for me, guys. Can't spell Jared, Washington without wagon. Hakeem, he keeps saying it. I'm more concerned to know the status of Dylan Johnson, right? And I know we have a week to really find out what's going on, but if Dylan Johnson is not healthy, I'm going to take Michigan. If Dylan Johnson is healthy, you know, I would side with Hakeem and take Washington. So right now, to be determined with me, because I'm not willing to say Washington will win this ball game, even getting points, if Dylan Johnson is not in the lineup, because if they are not running the football, if they don't try to run the football and be successful in doing so at moments in this ball game, they're going to struggle. And then also, too, you talk about the, the, the over. Michael Pennis in that offense is high power offense. But one thing I know about Michigan's defense, they don't give up a lot of points. So it, I have to wait and see, you know, the status of Dylan Johnson before I give you guys my pick. So right now I'm kind of neutral, but I would lean with the under if I had to give you something right now. Hakeem, you said you can't spell uh, Washington without wagon. You also can't spell Washington without win because that's what they're going to do. They're going to win it yes. out right, and I'm with you. Take the money line. And I think when you look at what uh, – Tybo Rogers is going to be big in this, right? Because Dylan Johnson plays, he probably will be limited a little bit. But it, when you have that offensive line that Washington has – and the, the poise under pressure that Michael Penix has, wh whether he's getting pressure in his face or he's just making subtle movements to get up in the pocket to buy himself another half second and then deliver the ball deep downfield, uh, you know, it's it's hard for anybody to stop that. I don't, I don't care how good Michigan's front seven is. It's hard to, for anybody to stop that. And what we saw tonight, the big stage does not bother Michael Penix, and he is so deadly accurate downfield. I don't care how good Michigan's uh, secondary is. Those wide receivers are just basically uncoverable. So I, I, I'm with you, Hakeem. I'm on that wagon, and you can't spell Washington without win because they're going to win the game outright. Let's go. Washington seeking its second national title in school history. They split 1991 with Miami. You know. Michigan looking to win its first national championship since 1997. On that 1991 team with Washington when they split the natty with uh, the Hurricanes, my favorite player was Napoleon Kaufman. Oh, yeah. Napoleon Coffey. Boy, he was it's a bad. deep pull right Winning there. Rocking that, that number eight. I wore number eight also. Had Steve Edmond on that team as well. If I'm not mistaken, Mark Brunel was the quarterback. Immaculate Mark Gritty. Was the quarterback. Yep. Brian McFadden. Yeah, I was watching balls since growing <laughs> oh, up. Oh, I know you were. That's all I've been doing, watching balls. That's good. Shouts yeah. out to Napoleon Coffin, by the way. Yeah, shouts to him and uh, shouts to Michael Penix Jr. and Kalen DeBoer and Jim Harbaugh and J.J. McCarthy because this game's going to be awesome. Washington, Michigan, it is one versus two. Michigan seeking its first national title since 1997, and they're also seeking their 10th in school history. For Washington, they're seeking just their second national title in school history, first since 1991. They'll meet Monday night in Houston.